rural areas and it's large pieces of land that are rural in our country. So I would like Treasury to, 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 to indicate to us as they indicate on the uh, uh, projects what is there for rural development. Thank you so much. Over to you, N.A. Um, National Treasury, sorry. Yes. No, no, thank, thank you very much, uh, no, Aram. Thank you, thank you very much. I am not alone, as, as you indicated in the beginning. I'm with a few colleagues. Let me dish out some responsibilities that can be heard. Um, you know, Marie Jane Maleni is here. She will talk to us about the work that we do in rural, I mean, in cities, and about commenting on the 20 catalytic projects that are essentially. Um, you know, if it's the question that I understand around Murolong, it's, it's mainly in the Department of Human Settlements, but the question can come. Laura will then answer the question on the GTEC and also the question on, um, you know, IFMS and where we're going. And I can always come in. And then Wibuso, Wibuso is, is from Economic Policy. She's also on the call. And she's one of the chief directors there. Duncan Peters, the GDG is on leave, unfortunately. But we also will be able to then take us through some of the work that they do from a research point of view and what currently they, we are doing uh, and, and what, what, what are the areas of focus there that we're doing. Now, in terms of just maybe talking generally about gender-based violence um, and, and the funding thereof, well, what we are doing on our Abraham is that in the Treasury, we took the national program and then customized it uh, to suit the National Treasuries Program. And that's why we have that focus group that I set up and that we, once in a while, uh, at, at my level, we have an engagement with, with various, uh, uh, you know, you know um, committees, including this one. And, and, and then we are able to share experiences, taking cue from the program that is essentially led by the Department of, uh, and, and, um, you know, Department of, uh, you know, uh, women, um, you know, so they, they are leading that that, 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 that work. And then obviously, the, I know for sure, departments have made sure that we mainstream the work that they do in all our government programs. So there is work that, that they are doing there. And then I can imagine if the committee would want more details, we can obviously get those from, from the department in terms of what exactly they're doing in rural areas, uh, in particular around gender focal areas that, that, that needs to be focused on. Maybe let me start with Laura and then Marie Jane can come in and then Rikusa can also come in. Thanks. Thanks, DJ. All right. Um, thank you very much, um, Committee and DG. Um, in, re in respect of the IFMS uh, question, um, please note that it is an indicator in our in, in our APP. It falls under Program Five. It's indicator number five point one point six on page seventy four of our APP for the MTSF period. And for this year, it uh, remains indicator five point one point six. But for the quarterly indicators, please refer to page seventy six of our APP. In respect of the question on GTAC, um, uh, committee members will uh, recall that uh, GTAC has now established its own um, separate and focused report planning and reporting uh, processes. Historically, GTAC had been was part of our APP and our APR, but since then they have matured. Uh, in terms of their own capabilities, and GTEC now releases their own APP and their own APR. The parts of the work where we where GTEC does specific projects for National Treasury, such as MFIB as well as Jobs Fund, you will see those indicators are in National Treasury's APP. But the operations of GTEC are managed and monitored through their own um, planning and reporting instruments. On the monitoring of um, Operation Volendlela, indeed, um, the committee is correct that it is not currently in the APP of National Treasury. However, 
um, going forward in the next financial year, it will certainly be included. Having said that, Treasury is monitoring um, the operations of Operation Volilela in two ways. One, we are working uh, with the team um, and um, our focal point is the DDG for Economic Policy, who is the link between Treasury um, and the Presidency, who are jointly responsible for the delivery of Operation Volendlela, and it is located in the Deputy uh, Minister of Treasury's office. We are monitoring in two respects. One, we are monitoring the operations of Operation Volendlela as it relates to Treasury's responsibilities, i.e. the setting up of the office as well as the financing of the office and the resourcing. And then for those uh, core business of Operation Volendela that falls within National Treasury's ambit, uh, we will be monitoring that and that component would then be added into our APP going forward. In the interim, uh, similarly as we had uh, committed to the committee that we will report uh, on our, when we report on our performance on the establishment of the state bank, we commit to the committee that we will report on Operation Volendela, uh, both in terms of the separate and, and purposeful reporting on its establishment, given that it is a joint function between ourselves and the presidency, as well as those indicators that will be included um, in the next APP. On the matter of um, other issues that will be uh, dealt with by those specific divisions. I just want to also remind the committee that uh, specific uh, monitoring of those indicators um, will obviously be part of our reporting quarterly, um, and we will provide evidence on all of those, including uh, the research papers. Um, just leading into, uh, we'll put so uh, input on that matter. Uh, we will commit also that uh, SPMNE will provide uh, the com the committee with last year's uh, research papers that are on our website. It may be easier for us to just provide uh, directly to to the. I uh, thank you, DJ. I'll hand back to you. Thank you, Chair. And just on the question on before. Madijen comes and before we presume, there was a question on the vaccination program. Um, we, we are on track. Um, uh, two questions came there about the funding. One is that one of our members will notice that in this current financial year, we've set aside 4.350 billion towards this program. And obviously, we'll be closely monitoring this. And if need be, um, the adjustments budget, if we need to augment that, we'll do that. We did commit before that this is a public good that will make anything possible to ensure that we, we allocations to this area is provided for. So as a start, we have got that amount and so far, there are no challenges there. Secondly, you know, um, it has been noted that the, you know, the report I'm getting is that the J&J &J vaccines will be coming in the around around uh, you know in the next month or two in the next two months and then the, the the Pfizer vaccine arrived going for testing currently and all that is also on track in terms of of that rollout uh, so so from the, the colleagues who work with closely with the Department of Health indicate there are no challenges in so far as that is concerned but in so far as allocations are concerned as I say we'll be looking at very closely if need be uh, we need to augment that. We will certainly do that. Mary Jane, do you want to come on in terms of the question that Honorable Rolong had on the catalytic projects, including including the, the, the work that we do in the cities? Thanks. And uh, Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you, DG, and Honorable Members of the Committee. Uh, I think the question is asking where do we locate rural development um, uh, as, a, as a country? Uh, and and in, in relation to the programs that we are running uh, in terms of catalyzing developments uh, in the cities, um, towns, um, uh, and, and our metros. So I, I would start by saying that uh, I think in our you know fiscal framework and fiscal system and and and, and the programs that government runs. There is a very clear, you know, consciousness of uh, differentiation between your rural and your urban, and understanding the challenges that the urban areas are faced with, 
and the opportunities that they are present and, uh, and, uh, and, and what we need to unleash uh, in order for the, or what we need to do to unleash their potential. And also understanding the rural areas, their challenges, uh, and what needs to be done in those rural areas. So when you look at our rural, rural development, I do think that is one of the area that government has over the years really focused on the very fact that we have got the Ministry of Rural Development and also Agriculture. So those programs are really meant uh, as, a, as an intentional um, um, effort by government to drive rural development. And it's something that has been happening over, over the years. The only thing is really about uh, improvement that needs to happen uh, in, in those areas, including uh, a lot of infrastructure programs that are also targeted to uh, addressing the backlogs in the rural areas, in all areas of basic services that are run by provinces and municipalities. So I do think that uh, in, in, in reflecting on what government is doing in rural areas, I think if we were to put together uh, all the, the financing that is actually targeted, it's going to be quite a lot. Because even when we allocate um, um, allocations uh, through our formulas, we do allocate much more, uh, you know, per household to rural areas re relevant to the cities, which is where actually money is actually being, be, be, being taxes are being collected. So what we also have also have appreciated is that urbanization is a reality, and that there is uh, over the years uh, observation of urbanization of poverty and you would see the poor people being flocking in in in, in formal settlement that reflect uh, you know um, a failure in terms of how this urbanization is actually managed in such a way that it doesn't uh, lead to uh, more poverty and more squalor conditions um, in in these areas so we we running the the, the programs uh, that uh, aimed at supporting cities and in supporting towns. And these are in, in line with uh, um, uh, urban development framework, uh, national urban development framework that also really articulated some of the challenges that actually are inhibiting the cities and our towns to really be key drivers of economic growth without actually government having to spend much more money. So when we talk about the catalytic development programs, uh, we are talking about those projects that we are saying using the, fi the financing that uh, is going to this uh, metros and the cities and, and towns. How do we get them to actually plan in such a way that they can focus and direct investments that can actually leverage um, uh, uh, you know, financing from the private sector, from and, 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 and integrate financing across the spheres of government and begin to drive a development in these areas. So, so and this is the, 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 the issue of trying to catalyze spatial transformation, which uh, we know that our cities have not really been cured from the, the, the legacy of apartheid in terms of how people are located, the poor located very far from opportunities. So part of this is really about driving that, that program of, of actually uh, you know, supporting these cities to drive the program of special transformation. And, and I will believe that this is really about unlocking their potential and ensuring that they can actually, urbanization doesn't become a curse, but it can become a lever for actually improved, uh, you know, efficiency and improve uh, economic development and the quality of life that are actually coming into the urban areas. So our programs really is running, is, is, is having uh, the, 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 the areas that we have identified in terms of uh, the, 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 city, the cities, um, you know, the intermediate cities, if you like, uh, where we work over with COCTA, because we have also uh, in COCTA reformed one of their grants to actually enable that targeting of investments that are leveraging other investments. And then we are looking at also and the towns. Uh, and, and the metros in, in specific areas. And, and I think that is really also trying to show what we can do to actually drive investment that can actually bring about greater value of the funds that are being spent by government. So thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. I made a mistake. Uh, instead of saying two weeks, I said two months for the J&J &J vaccine it will be in two months, I mean, two weeks at the you know, middle of this month, current month. Um, we put so do you want to come in on the, on the issue about the research and the work that you guys do in economic policy? 
Thank you, DJ. Certainly. Good morning, Chair, and good morning, honorable members of the committee. So I will briefly respond to the question on the research partnership that we currently have, um, which is uh, SA Tide. So briefly, SA Tide is a collaboration between the United Nations University World Institute for Development, Economic Research, or UNUIDA, International Food Policy Research Institute, IFCRI, as well as other government uh, departments and research organizations in South Africa and in the sub-region. And of course, Treasury is uh, part of that partnership. Uh, in terms of the work areas that that the research uh, touches on, it can be divided into six broad thematic work streams, and they are as follows. The first is enterprise development for job creation and growth. The second is public revenue mobilization for inclusive development. The third is macroeconomic modeling for policy formulation. The fourth is turning the tide for inequality. The fifth is climate change and energy transitions as drivers of change. And the sixth is regional growth and uh, for South Africa's, Southern Africa's prosperity rather. Collectively, these work streams produce uh, research that is of, a high, of high quality, but also policy relevant that offers solutions to the current bottlenecks that the South African economy faces. Um, it also is uh, novel in some ways in that it also has the dimension of thinking about how to respond to these challenges from a regional perspective. Um, uh, to Laura's point earlier, we can also provide a list of the papers that were published um, in the past financial year uh, for your interest, uh, but they are also publicly available on the SA Tide website, which we can drop the link to for your uh, perusal at your convenience. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bipuso. Chair, I think that was about the questions that we were asked, and then we will be more than happy to take more questions if any and comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, DJ. Um, Honorable Skosana, are you awake? <laughs> Uh, DG, you know, I I I want to to mention this. I I'm not sure if we have um, other parties uh, present in this meeting. However, in our forecasts, we were requested to indicate the bills that we are going to be passing in the various departments that we are oversighting. So I'm also interested to know, in as far as that is concerned, what do we have in store as, 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 as National Treasury, so that also as the committee we are able to plan according to the definite bills that are coming uh, our way for, the, for, the, for this year. So secondly, DJ, I, I I I did I did pick up that you did indicate about the the audit outcomes and just for the APP now are there any audit action plans especially uh, in view of the other sectors within finance that have not um, performed so well according to uh, the, 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 the audit report. Is there no plan uh, whether maybe it's implementation, monitoring, and so on, if you could talk to that? Um, just to follow up on the issue of rural development. Uh, I hear what the response is saying in terms of city development. And I hear that, yes, there is a department called rural development, but I, I seem to miss the intention or the commitment by a national treasury to really, to really um, transform our rural uh, areas, not necessarily to become cities, but to become vibrant economically on their own by, amongst other things, uh, creating or enhancing their infrastructure. Because if you start with the issue of informal settlements in cities, 
and everything that is happening there, <coughs> sorry, you will you will be starting at the wrong place because there is a reason why there is an influx into urban areas. It is because of the absence of economic activity in the rural areas. That is why the question is asked, because you, you also do not want people to flock into the cities while the rural areas have a lot of land that is not being used. That is how or where the question is coming from. Just lastly, DG, for me, the issue of uh, the issue of um, uh, filling in of critical vacant positions. It's pleasing to see that it's being incremental in a sense. However, one is also interested to know that if we say we are now filling eight thousand and fifty nine of those. How many are they? You know, where do you want to go with, the, with that? So that we have a sense <clears throat> that as we move from 900 to 1,000, how close are we to clinching the whole um, complement of the, 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 the vacant uh, the critical posts? Thank you, teaching. My hand is up, Chair. Okay, you can come in. No, thank you very much, uh, Chair. And greetings to the Honourable Deputy Minister and all of Honourable Members, the DG and the uh, 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 Treasury team. Uh, when mine uh, is just on the on the support that uh, the treasury is giving to municipalities, as I think you, it, I think it was indicated uh, in one of our meetings last year uh, that you know, they are having a program in supporting municipalities on issues of uh, financial management and uh, just to assist the municipalities to have favorable uh, audit uh, uh, outcome, which is I think is one of the the challenges that uh, we are having as a country that the uh, majority of our municipalities they are getting uh, very unfavorable uh, audit outcomes. So I just want to find out as to up to so far, uh, how far is that particular program? Is it yielding any positive uh, results? Uh, are we likely to see the improvement in terms of audit outcomes of, of uh, uh, municipalities in the near future? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Kosana. Honorable George. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, and my apologies for being um, late at the meeting. I had an urgent matter to uh, resolve. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, uh, the question's already been asked by yourself um, regarding the um, legislation that's being planned. So, that was one of my um, was one of my questions, but I mean, also specifically, it's a matter that I've been raising over time. Is I wanted to just get some insights into pension fund reform. Um, oh, I certainly know that there's been a lot of movement of late on that, specifically with with the very difficult circumstances that members are finding themselves in at the moment. So, I would like to know whether there is anything. Um, planned um, or strategized in that particular um, aspect. Thanks very much, Chair. Thank you so much, um, Honorable George. <coughs> I'm sorry. Any more hands? I don't see any. Uh, over to you, DJ. No, it's me. I, I raised my hand already. Oh, sorry, I didn't see your hand. Is it is it Shivambo? Honorable Shivambo? Yes. Okay, you can take the floor. I I, I want to talk to two issues, uh, a few observations that I want to make about National Treasury in general, that it's actually very difficult to even uh, 
participate in these meetings because we are told lies every day here. Like, like we've been two, three years ago, there was a commitment on creation of a state bank. And all these meetings, there's commitment that we are soon to table a progress report. This is what is going to happen. But there's nothing that is happening in that regard. Nothing. And 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 uh, commitments are just made, and then we're just made fools. We're we being misled by uh, by the department and and the ministry in, in that regard, and that is problematic in terms of uh, what happens. And they do so because there's no consequences, like on, on people lying deliberately, knowing that they're lying in terms of what is going to happen. So I think that is very problematic in the manner that uh, it is. I also want to talk about the PIC because the PIC amendment bill that has been signed has got specific directives in terms of how the board of the PIC must be constituted and how it must be composed of and who must be chairperson and everything else there. But now there is no PIC board that is uh, compliant with the law in, in the manner that is required. And the... Uh, the other thing is that like the, it's dysfunctional because a lot of people have left, they've not been replaced in the manner that it is. The person who is a chairperson there is also a chairperson of Discovery Bank Board. So we've got a person who is a chairperson of a, of a separate bank and it's a chairperson of a very huge public institution like the PIC and nothing is being done in terms of uh, what is happening. I think that this is generally... a a lot of things which uh, are not being done correctly uh, in, in, in national treasury, which uh, we're not talking about in, in, in terms of uh, what should happen. It's actually discouraging to even interact with people who are just going to lie to you and make commitments and are not honest even to their own processes. They're not honest in terms of what happens with uh, uh, legislation in terms of all of these things. Those are a few observations. There are so many things that we can talk about, but I don't want to be lied to again when we're dealing with all of these issues. Okay. Are you through, Honorable uh, Sean? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, DJ? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe, let, 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 you know, and I don't know if the deputy minister is still on the call um, to maybe even respond to Honorable Shivambu in terms of the two points that he's making um, uh, on, on the PIC. As, as, as he correctly says, I mean, the, the ministry, um, meaning the deputy minister and the minister will, will, will be better placed to respond to the PIC board and the and, and the and the the choice of the chairperson and, and the comp you know, composition of the board in its entirety. So I think yeah, the, the issue is that we still have to obviously respond to this point, and it's been it's been raised a few times. And the second point that Honorable Shambu is raising around the creation of the state bank, insofar as apart from what the deputy minister said, I think I, I'm, the, the technical work that we are doing or that at least I know I've overseen in the last few months, um, is, is the interaction that are critical and necessary for a bank to be established. Look at what we have, look at the, 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 the trial. We had intensive discussions with the Department of Communications, we had you know, discussions around, uh, you know, questions like, big questions like, and that, that's part of the conversation that's been happening. And that's what cabinet must guide us on because the CAP memo is ready, I can confirm that. It is ready. It's not that we announce you, but we don't have it. I mean, we, we've done the work to, to the best of our abilities in ensuring that. But however, uh, the key question still remains. Um, you know, you know, the the post the, the Department of Comms had their own processes in 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 the post bank and its future, and there's also another option of uh, of, of 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 dissolving that and, and actually creating a new state bank at the backdrop of a current. A PIC, I mean, current, uh, you know, post bank. There are many other DFIs like your Itala Thai Bank, who, which also, in a way, are you know, banks and owned by the state. Do we just dissolve all of them into one big entity, or do we just create a new thing? So these, these are 
options that are currently there in the memo that you've prepared. And so to an extent, it's taking long, as the deputy minister said, but to the best of my knowledge and the process that I have overseen and was chairing discussions thereof, there is some technical work that is being done. But what is not there, and some of she almost says, is a pronouncement that says a bank has been established and a board is there. So that that, is, that obviously has not been done. So, but again, I, I guess I can imagine when cabinet has finalized this matter, and uh, the deputy minister can can obviously at the right time respond to that. But these two, uh, I had, uh, had, uh, had hoped that the deputy minister is here to respond to this particular. But we'll take note of the second one in particular, and even request a written response to the comment that Omar Jerome is making, so that there's honesty in the way we engage with the committee and respect to, to what the committee expects of us, which I think is a good thing to do. The, the other thing, Mary Jane may come back on, on the audit process and outcomes and what you've been doing in insofar as uh, municipalities are concerned, especially the questions that Honorable Skosana is, is, is asking. And Laura, I don't know, if you, you know, maybe we can touch on other questions and then we can we then go on and then try and touch all. Thanks, thanks, Laura. Thank you, DG. Um, on the matter of the legislation, uh, we did provide uh, in our APP and in the presentation a full list of the legislation that we um, and strategies that we are currently working on. Um, however, we do not expect all of them uh, to come uh, through into uh, Parliament uh, this year. What we will definitely bring through is obviously the um, financial sector laws amendment bill it's currently before uh, Parliament, the appropriation and adjustments appropriation bills, the division of revenue and division of revenue amendment bill, the rates and monetary amounts and amendments of revenue laws, the tax administration laws amendment bill, and the taxation laws amendment bill. Um, and then obviously we're expecting the public uh, procurement bill to come through, but only uh, in December. The longer list that we've provided uh, to the committee and we uh, included in our APP is all of those uh, pieces of legislation and strategy that we are currently working on, but they're in different um, progress statuses. In respect of the audit findings, um, as the committee so correctly indicated, um, monitoring the redress, mitigation and in implementation of controls um, to ensure that audit findings are not repeated. It's a key component of moving towards um, what is locally known as a clean audit. In order to, um, to do that, National Treasury has done two key, uh, we've implemented two key processes. The first one is we've set up a, um, a committee of senior um, National Treasury officials whose responsibility is, it is, is to um, ensure the implementation of the controls that have been agreed to with the AG to ensure that the audit findings are addressed and that they do not reoccur. This committee meets on a quarterly basis. Um, they uh, receive evidence from the various uh, audit finding owners, um, and then that is reported back to the DG, to EXCO, and to the audit committee. In that way, we ensure that the controls that have been agreed to are implemented, and we don't expect a repeat audit findings. The second thing that we've done is we've included the, um, the mitigation measures that have been agreed to, either in the external audit findings or internal audit uh, findings. Those mitigation plans are included in each chief director's operational plans, and it is included in the performance agreements of each of the DPGs. And in this way, we have linked the strategic, the planning process to the monitoring process, uh, to the reporting process on an organizational way, as well as uh, individually uh, making individual employees accountable. Um, and we, we're confident that this will uh, certainly shift us forward uh, towards our goal of a clean audit. On the matter of personnel, you're correct. Um, we are currently at 979. We are hoping to uh, be able to fill uh, positions uh, this year to 1055. 
And those positions have been identified both within each division as critical, and then there's been an assessment across divisions to identify um, organizationally critical positions. And those are currently uh, being filled. So there is a clear process to link the priority positions that need to be filled uh, for each division's um, service delivery, but equally across the organization in order to ensure that we deliver against the mandate. Critically, we are filling positions um, in, in program five, as I've indicated, but also in areas such as economic policy, uh, budget office, um, as well as the other divisions as required, including IGR. Um, I think that I have answered the questions that, that I can assist with. Thank you, Deji. Thanks, Thanks was it? There's a very fine line in terms of the role of the National Treasury vis-a-vis -vis the role of some national departments and some sectors. I'm responding to your question around our role in rural areas and municipalities and holding uh, us accountable to some of the things that's happening in, in some of the sectors, including some of the areas. Uh, 216 of the Constitution gives us certain type of responsibilities. The PFMA expands on those responsibilities. What well, then it does, uh, Chair, it, it, it obviously, we can only, to an extent in some cases, provide an oversight on, on financial governance and the expenditure and budgeting thereof of that particular sector department, which we do pretty well. We've got systems that have matured that are in that space uh, that ensure that we are able to track expenditure and then actually keep uh, uh, accountability checks in place around the spending and the uh, allocations whether the am amounts have been spent efficiently and effectively. That's what the PFMA and FMA and, and the Constitution says we must do. But I'm seeing a fine line because then, then the program of actual implementation of certain programs, day-to-day -day operations remains the sector, uh, remains the department in question, if it's uh, in health, it will be health. If, if it's the Department of Rural Development in terms of their mandate and their APP and their objectives and mission, it will be that particular department. So sometimes, uh, which I'm not saying you're doing that, Chair, but sometimes we find that we, we, we are very thin in terms of details of what some of the departments are doing, but we find that in some cases we obviously know, know quite a lot in terms of how and how they should be implemented. Because we expect after budgets have been passed after budget votes have been passed in, in, in parliament, that then those particular departments and accounting officers, their responsibility then kicks in, in terms of program and, pro and implementation, including ensuring that money is spent effectively and efficiently. So that's why in some cases, Chair, we, 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 we then say, we will give you the facts in terms of you know, estimates of spending and estimates of, 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 of targets where they have been achieved, looking at our own prism of our own space and eyes, then the department themselves then must appear, or then in some cases they are joint portfolio committees. So th th that's always a very difficult uh, thing that sometimes we do. But however, we've got analysts that look in, in terms of the expenditures um, you know, that are taking place, and we obviously robustly engage the said departments in terms of the targets, whether they've met their targets or not. Because as you know, the estimates of national expenditure is something that we produce at the, at the time of the budget. And then we, our analysts, uh, both uh, budget analysts, including expenditure analysts, uh, in, you know, focus on that and use that as a barometer. Uh, I see, <clears throat> Chair, I'll ask Mr. Momoniam to come to, to, to the question around, around the, you know, that, uh, you know, Honorable George has asked around pension fund reform. And, and, and other questions that, that may be a moment. Yeah, no, thank you. Th thanks, TJ, and uh, morning, uh, uh, honorable members. Um, uh, uh, on, on, on pension fund reform, uh, that is ongoing. Uh, yes, it is slower than uh, what I think we would all want, uh, largely because we are. Uh, in, in continual discussions with stakeholders at NADLAC. Um, we publish both in the budget review and uh, in the MTPPS, just the focus areas that we have. 
So, you know, the key focus area, for example, that we have is, uh, um, uh, well, well, firstly, that we, we obviously have got a neutralization for provident funds, which took effect on the 1st of March this year. And just going forward, we're still engaging on a whole question of early withdrawals versus uh, getting uh, um, preservation. Uh, we've, we've linked the two because if you don't, uh, you'll find that members will just withdraw everything. And to the extent that it's uh, any withdrawal, it's going to be a very limited withdrawal. But the issues are complex and uh, I think will take a bit of time to, to resolve um, uh, and get agreement within NEDLEC uh, because I think that's going to be quite critical. Um, uh, but linked to that, we are also looking at issues of auto-enrollment, uh, establishing a default fund for those that don't have funds. We're continuing with consolidation, uh, better governance over umbrella funds, for example, um, uh, the other uh, initiative that's ongoing, we've published all the uh, changes to regulation to, an aid to enable more investment uh, in, uh, in, into infrastructure. So those are some of the reforms that, that are ongoing. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Okay, I'm not sure, um, Honorable Shivambo and Honorable George, are those new hands? Or old hands? Yes, mine is a new hand. Uh, I wanted to just ask a simple question in terms because I, I heard now that the the amount of money that has been allocated for vaccination is like some 4.3 billion. Just how many people can you vaccinate with 4.3 billion? Uh, because if, if what the Minister of Health said is the cost of vaccination and vaccines, I don't think we'll be able to even reach 20% of the population. And and that is the allocation, the allocated budget for this year, meaning that if those are the quantums of amounts that you allocate for vaccination per year, it will take us five years to up to, 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 to vaccinate the whole of South Africa. So in your estimation, just how many people are going to vaccinate with that amount that you have allocated now? And vaccination, not just the purchase, the entire process from setting up of facilities, the syringes and everything else. How many people will be vaccinated with the 4.3 billion? I'm done, Chair. Okay. Uh, Honorable George, can I check if your hand is, is a new hand? Um, no, thanks, Chair. I've lowered my hand. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, Honorable Members. And as you comment on the last comment by um, Honorable Shivambo, can you also give us an indication of the, 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 the financial sector summit that, that, that has been postponed several times. I know that it's 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 difficult times now with the pandemic and lockdown and all that. But just an indication as to whether it's still on track or not. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, honorable members, for the questions. Just in terms of Honor Shibambo's question, 4.350 billion um yes. Um we are aware that that may not be enough. The department indicated in their plan that they want to target 40 million South Africans this year. Whether that's achievable or not is, is something else, but that's the target that has been set. Now, what we have committed to, we did indicate at the end of the term of the budget that the contingency reserve money that we, that we have put in will also kick in if there's need. Um, to actually increase the 4.35 billion. Um, that, that's the most realistic estimate that we had at the time when we put the budget together. We could have taken the whatever is allocated in the contingency reserve and allocated to the department. But I don't remember to remember that in my opening remarks, I did indicate that currently that we have 4.3 billion, but if need be, we'll obviously make more allocations at the time of the adjustment budget. 
what cabinet has committed and confirmed to us is that uh, this is a public good and we'll ensure that no person is going to not be vaccinated as a result of allocations or money being available. That we will make sure that we allocate, I mean, we, we vaccinate anyone possibly in the current financial year. But I know the estimate is 14 million South Africans and uh, we the minimum amount this year is 4.3. It could increase to any number based on the, what the budget can carry and more allocations are made next year and the year three, including uh, some provincial allocations towards the vaccination program. In terms of the financial sector summit, uh, Chair, it's, it's in a net, you know, the best of my knowledge, I know uh, some colleagues can come in here. This uh, it's, it remains a net led process. It is not in, in, you know, in our control, uh, but we can obviously find that out in terms of where we are at on, our, on Abraham, in terms of that summit. That is uh, that has been on the cast for some time. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay, just quickly, so that we, the, this one is not let uh, to pass. The question in relation to vaccination is: How many people can you vaccinate with four point three billion? I'm not talking about the intentions. I'm talking like your own estimation. How many people will four point three billion vaccinate? That is the question. If you can respond to it now, can you please give us a, res a written response? Uh, with your permission, I will certainly give a written response to Honorable Shibambo after consultation with the Department of Health. Thank you very much. I'll do that. All right. We take that. Um, Honorable uh, members, there be no further questions. I will just check with... Uh, Hey, Alan, are there any announcements in terms of forthcoming meetings? Uh, just tomorrow, uh, it's a briefing by SARS on the um, annual performance plan. Uh, same time, 9 to 12. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, Honorable members, I just want to thank you for your cooperation and attendance in this meeting. Uh, I just want to thank also the National Treasury. I know that um, the Deputy Minister also had to leave for another meeting, as he indicated at the beginning of the meeting. DG, thank you so much. I know that there are also areas that your team could have noted where the, the responses have not been sufficient. So as you uh, respond to the issues that have been raised by in fact, on the issue of the vaccination program, please uh, ensure that other members who have not sufficiently responded to other questions also make a note and do a written response. We want to thank you so much for this opportunity. And I'm hoping that we remain committed to issues of a transformation of the economy and we also want to impress upon the department that this is what this committee hopes for then this is what this committee will always look for as we interact with the department and for sure you have also spoken on the advancement of uh, the, the the country in terms of the developmental interest, that is for us very in, uh, interesting as well. And we look forward to seeing what Treasury does. Uh, lastly, DG, on the issue of local municipalities, I know that Treasury has acted on some of the municipalities that have got financial irregularities. And how I wish... A DG that there could also, I know that municipalities are also a quarter entities. However, in terms of whatever we can do as the National Treasury, let's do our best to ensure that financial uh, performance is at its best and where there are follies as national treasuries, we are the ones 
who allocate funds to these the, the different municipalities and therefore it becomes our responsibility once again to ensure that there is accountability and if there is no accountability or if there is defiance one way or the other we need to see consequences as society thank you so much uh, dg may you have a nice day to all of you thank you bye thank you very much and thank you to all our members thank you Bye.